Hello once again and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you've seen and if you want to see more. Coming up in this episode, the lambs reunite. Jamie Shaw is on the move. Cornwall players big ban. And NRL Thursday's results and scorers. And we start today with Cornwall Rugby League Football Club as a couple of weeks ago one of their players was sent off early in a game and we were trying to find out what the issue was and why he was sent off. Well, due to uh, the RFL coming down with a heavy ban, it's, uh, the details have emerged. Booker Luke Collins has been given an eight match ban after pleading guilty for using homophobic language. Collins was sent off during Cornwall's recent League One defeat to Doncaster for the offence and he was given a Grade F charge, the highest possible, by the RFL's match review panel and an independent operations rules tribunal, which handed down the eight match suspension. It will mean he will miss the rest of the season with Cornwall only having six matches left in their debut campaign. In a statement, Cornwall said, Luke Collins has been handed an eight match suspension and fined £75 by the Rugby Football League for using homophobic language in the recent Betfred League One match against Doncaster. Luke was sent off from the field by the match referee for, and the incident referred to the RFL tri dispute, disciplinary tribunal. Luke has made a sincere and profound apology for his actions and before the tribunal took part in further education training on the subject of diversity and equality. The club was to place on record that this isolated incident is in no way reflection of Cornwall RLFC and the values it holds as an inclusive and diverse professional entity which welcomes all communities in every aspect of its day-to-day -day operations. This was followed up by an apology placed on record by Luke Collins on all social media to do with uh, Cornwall RLFC. Luke Collins' an apology was titled, I would like to formally apologise and express, our deep, uh, express deep remorse for my actions in the last weekend's game against Doncaster. I reacted to a verbal abuse directed at me and in the heat of the moment I responded with an inappropriate homophobic word. I am incredibly embarrassed by my actions and this was extremely unacceptable and unprofessional. It is in no way a represent representation of the player or the person I am, nor my club, Cornwall RLFC. I understand that even in the heat of the moment, homophobic words and homophobia have no place in rugby league, no society. I would like to apologise to anyone who may have heard my language or was offended by my actions on Saturday, July the 9th. While I can honestly state that my actions were not born of any genuine prejudice, I recognise I, that I need to do better. With the help of my club, I have completed an equality and diversity course to help me moving forward to ensure nothing like this ever happens again. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address this issue and I express my profound regret. In the personal comments on this, I don't think it's a Cornwall or a player's um, only specific instance. I'm sure that there's still rugby league players that still have that mentality, but are a bit more guarded with the words. And so we accept as a whole that rugby league is diverse. Three things will happen. One, we'll fail as a sport. Two, we won't be inclusive despite the messages that we put out. And three, we won't grow. Next, we move up a division as Lee Centurions have now confirmed the signing of Lachlan Lamb for the rest of the season and until the end of the 2023 season. The Sydney Roosters and Papua New Guinea International joins his father, head coach Adrian Lamb, and he's expected to join up with the squad in the next few days. 
head of rugby, Chris uh, Chester, described himself as over the, over the moon with the club's latest high quality signing and revealed that it was a team effort to get the deal over the line. It's a fantastic signing for the club, Chester said. It's another signing we show, uh, that shows our intent. We are recruiting top quality NRL players and they are coming over here to make a difference. Lachlan will make a big difference to our squad for the rest of the year and 2023. He fits perfectly in our recruitment policy and we can build a club around players like Lachlan. Chester went on to pay tribute to the continuing investments of club owner Derek Beaumont for financing this deal. But for the support for, of Derek financially, signings like this would be impossible, he said. It is fantastic for the town and the game that Derek is willing to back the club in the way that he does. It's the amazing support he has given the club over the years. And we look to reward him and his family with, for his ongoing commitment. Lamb Jr. was born in Sydney, but lived much of his early life in uh, Wigan when he his father was playing for the Warriors, m moving back home at the age of eight. I remember him as a young child when I played at Wigan and Adrian and all those years ago, said Mr. Chester. It's a great story to have him back here again. Speaking from Sydney, Lachlan Lamb said, I'm excited to be joining Lee Centurions. I've seen the success of the team this year and coming over to link up with Dad will be something that we've not done for a really long time. I'm really excited to do that. We had some special memories when we were younger and I'm looking forward to doing that now. Can't wait to get over and meet everybody and help the club achieve its goals. He came up through the Sydney Roosters junior teams representing Australia's schoolboys in 2016 and playing state, uh, junior state of origin. He became the first player to represent his state under the father-son rule when he played for the Queensland on the 16s. His father played state of origin for Queensland. Having followed in the footsteps of his father who played 146 first grade games for the Roosters in his only NRL club, it was a special family moment when Lachlan made his first grade debut for the Roosters in round two of the 2019 NRL season against Manly. In 2021, Lamb was a regular with the Roosters first grade side, often playing alongside former Centurions halfback Drew Hutchinson, who was an ever present in his first season at the club in 2018. Lamb also followed his father in becoming a Papua New Guinea international, marking his debut in 2017 World Cup with two first half tries in the 64 points to nil victory over the USA in Port Moresby when his new Centurions teammate, Nene McDonald, was also on the score sheet. He recently starred in the Papua New Guinea's 24 points to 14 victory over Fiji at Campbelltown Stadium, scoring two tries and creating another for David Mead on what was the captain's international and club farewell after one of his seven tackle breaks. We move up a division again as Wakefield Trinity have confirmed the signing of full fullback Jamie Shaw for the rest of the season as he joins on loan according to Hull's La Hull Lives reports. The move to Wakefield gives Shaw more regular game time and will try and help the West Yorkshire club avoid relegation. They currently sit bottom place in the Super League table after last week's defeat against Hull KR. The 30-year-old has played 195 appearances for Hull FC, scoring 105 tries. He hasn't played since the defeat to Leeds Rhinos at the start of the month in what has been a stop-start season for him with injuries and also not being in Brett Hodgson's overall plans, it seems. Hull have made no confirmation on the terms of the loan, but it's thought that a permanent deal could happen should Wakefield stay up next year. 
This is only Shaw's second other move, as he played three games for York City Knights back in 2013. So, being that said, he has had been, he has been a one-club man, which has also earned him one England cap in 2018. That was against France in the Lee Sports Village. He was fullback during the period where Hull won back-to-back -back Challenge Cups in 2016 and 2017 and was a runner-up in 2013. In 2016, he was also in the Super League Dream Team for the fullback position with his full side. But with the emergence of uh, Jake Connor being and him being put to a uh, full back meant that sometimes Shaw was being played out on the wing his not preferred position but was happy to play rugby league in any position but he saw himself as a full back now he moves to Wakefield where he uh, challenges the likes of Lee Gaskell and Max Jowett for the position at number one for Wakefield Trinity survival hopes We now turn our attention to the NRL as there is a full fixture list and everyone from Origin should return if they are physically able to for this round of fixtures. Now, let's see who's playing who in that league. Thursday morning see the Eels face the Broncos and we'll come to that in a few moments while the Dragons face Manly Seagulls and the Newcastle Knights face the Sydney Roosters on Friday. The Raiders versus the Warriors is the first game up on Saturday, while the Panthers and the Sharks face each other in Game 2. Game 3 sees the Rabbitohs versus the Storm, as the top two appear on the same day for the second week running. The Bulldogs face the Titans in what is a critical game for the Titans, while the Cowboys want to continue their top three credentials by beating the West Tigers you themselves are looking for a way out of the bottom of the table. So the first game on Thursday was the Parramatta Eels versus the Brisbane Broncos as uh, Parramatta returned to the Combank Stadium on Thursday to looking for back-to-back -back wins at home against the resurgent Broncos side who, like the Eels, are chasing a top four finish. Both teams sit on 24 competition points leading into round 19 with 11 wins each and are all but bound for the finals after a solid season so far. The Eels have still looked a bit wobbly in patches against teams in recent weeks, despite wins but remain a threat to any side in the Telstra Premiership. Brisbane have won a hard fought Queensland Derby against the Titans last start, but will want to knock off a top scalp away from home as they look to go to another level in the final weeks of the regular season. Parramatta have had the well, had the uh, wins over the Broncos recently uh, since 2019, winning six of their past seven games, including the last five by an average of 29 points in the in their favour. The Broncos have turned a corner from their previous seasons, however, with the one expected to this one expected to be closer than ever. So here are the teams. The Parramatta Eels have had no late changes from their team call up in the middle of the week. Ryan Matterson's return from a rib injury sees Maratta and Nicore revert to the bench, and Kai Rodwell drop to the 18th man. Bryce Cartwright, who has a rib injury, was listed amongst the reserves, but needs another week off, and was cut on Wednesday. The Broncos' top fledgler has been promoted to the starting side an hour before kickoff, with Corey Jensen going back to the bench. Corey Oates, Kurt Catewell, and Pat Carrigan return from their post-origin rest, but so in Cobbo, with a head knot remains on the sideline. Payne Haas is set to play his first game back since round 16 after his show injury and Corey Pax with who also had a head knock returns to the side. Jake Turpin has been promoted to start hooker with Billy Walters sideline with a hip injury. 
Dame Mariner is the 18th man. But it was the Broncos' day against the Eels as they won 36 points to 14. This despite a good start for the Eels as Makasivo went over on the 4th minute. Corey Oates, Payne Haas and Jordan Rickey all went over for tries before Will Penasini went to, into the Simbin. Kurt Capewell and Corey Oates scored while Penasini was in the bin. Either side a whacker played try. Makers Evil made it two from two, uh, two in the game as he scored on the 52nd minute. But Adam Reynolds put the cherry on top of the victory with a try. And also finishing off with six from six conversions. 24 points to 10 at half time was too big for the Eels to come back as Mitchell Moses could only convert one of the three tries. And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking that notification bell for any new videos or any updates that might be coming your way. Tell me what your thoughts are of today's video. There are some good signings, some relevant suspension news and also a good win for the Broncos away from home against a inconsistent Eels is the best way to put it. But the comment sections are open so tell me what your thoughts are of the rugby news today. I will just say thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share 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 this video worldwide and I wish you all the best. So please stay safe and I'll see you in the next episode.